Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today marks what would have been George Harrison's 78th birthday and in celebration of that I just wanted to go through his solo albums and kind of give a ranking. Uh, there's basically 10 proper uh, solo albums after he left the Beatles. Uh, he did however make a couple solo albums while he was in the Beatles. Um, just quickly, if I were to rank those in his albums here, I would put Electronic Sound at number 12. Just a lot of crazy sounds and stuff on here. Not much enjoyable on there for me anyway. And number 11 would probably have to be Wonderwall Music, uh, the soundtrack that he did for the film Wonderwall. Uh, kind of a goofy film I've seen, and an e the, the music I think is a little better than the film, but um, still, not really one that I listen to very often, or if at all. So, starting up with George's 10 proper solo albums. I just, this is my personal feelings on the albums, how I would rank them at this moment. Uh, these rankings can always change, you know, as your mood changes, you listen to different things. But uh, starting off here at number 10, we have 1975's Extra Texture. Read all about it. Uh, there's many people out there that would put this at the bottom of the list. Um, I mean, I really do enjoy all of George's solo albums, but you have to put something in the last place, and this is the one that takes it for me. Um, I will admit that recently I've been enjoying this album a lot more than I have. I've actually given it some time and listened to it. Uh, some of my favorite tracks on here are the song, the first song, You, is a really good one. Um, this guitar can't can't keep from crying kind of a follow-up to the while well, my guitar gently weeps from the white album and uh, tired of midnight blue is another one of my favorites on here and I even like the final track his name is legs it's kind of a goofy song but um, that's kind of enjoyable uh, it's kind of a really soft mellow album not really many rockers or anything like that on here so that's what you're in the mood for uh, that would be my pick for number 10. And number 9, we have 1974's Dark Horse album. Uh, I was thinking this was going to be a lot higher on my list. I, do, I really do enjoy this album. Um, but going through all the rest of his catalog, I, I felt that there was other albums that I enjoyed more. Uh, some of the tracks that stand out for me on this album are the, the title track, Dark Horse. Uh, now when he recorded this, he had kind of a... I don't know if it was laryngitis or but he had some, kind of some throat problems at the time and um, he actually is hoarse on the, on that song and a few other ones here but I actually kind of like that song anyway um, the first track is an instrumental that's kind of fun to listen to Hari's on tour that's a one that I really enjoy listening to um, so sad that's another another good one on here but that takes the place for number nine for me and moving along to number eight, we have the album from 1982, Gontrapo. I think this is somewhat universally low on everybody's George Harrison list, but um, I actually do enjoy this album more than a lot of people. A lot of people do. Um, there's just lots of great stuff on here, in my opinion. Um, the, the title song Gontrapo is good. I like the. The song Grease, it's mostly an instrumental, there's a few goofy lyrics in the middle there, but I really enjoy Grease. Um, I Really Love You, I think that's a cover song, uh, they do a good version of that on here. Mystical One and Dream Away, those are all really good songs in here and I really enjoy that. So that's my pick for number eight. Moving along to number seven, we have the self-titled album from 1979. This is George Harrison. Uh, some standout tracks on here that I really enjoy are uh, Love Comes to Everyone. Um, he does a version here. Uh, he recorded a little bit with the Beatles the song Not Guilty. That was kind of a more rocking version. Uh, if you can find that on the anthology. Um, but here it's kind of a more of an acoustic, mellow song on here. I do prefer the the anthology version myself, but uh, he's got a version of that on here. 
And another kind of a follow-up to a Beatles song, you know, he recorded uh, Here Comes the Sun. And on this album, we kind of have somewhat of a sequel, the song Here Comes the Moon. Um, and on side two, a couple of my favorite George Harrison tracks here are uh, Dark Sweet Lady and Your Love is Forever. Just the way those two kind of flow into each other, they're just really, really good songs. I really enjoy those. So there we have it, 79's George Harrison. All right, number six from 1981, we have the album Somewhere in England. Now for me, um, George Harrison and Somewhere in England are almost like a volume one and two. They kind of, to me, they seem like they fit together really well back to back. Um, just a lot of, again, a lot of great songs on here. There's so many great George Harrison songs and you don't really hear these on the radio all that often. Even on the Beatles channel, they don't really play a lot of these great um, George Harrison tracks. Like, uh, today especially, I don't know, I must have heard it on the radio for his birthday, but the song, the first song, Blood From A Cologne, I've had that in my head all day, I don't know why, but just a really catchy song and I really like that one. Um, Life Itself, and of course you got the hit all those years ago, uh, written for uh, John Lennon there. Uh, got even a couple of Hoagie Carmichael songs, we got uh, Baltimore Oriole and uh, Hong Kong Blues, those are kind of interesting renditions done by George here. And Teardrops is another really good song, song on this album. Alright, now we're into the top five. So at number five, uh, I was thinking this might have been a little bit higher, but again, going through, I kind of had a little bit of a change of heart here. Um, 1973's Living in the Material World. Again, it's a really great George Harrison album, but um, there was just a few others that I, I liked more. Uh, some of the standout tracks on here for me are uh, the title track, Living in, a, in the Material World, um, Give Me Love, Give Me Peace on Earth, Sue Me, Sue You Blues, really nice uh, blues song on there, and uh, Try Some, Buy Some is a really, really good song too. Sorry for the reflection on there, but... Yeah, that's number five on my list here. Uh, moving way forward in his career to 2002, this is number four. It's his final album that was put out actually after he passed away. Uh, this is Brainwashed. Uh, his son Danny and ELO's Jeff Lynn kind of put some of the finishing touches on this album after George passed away. And just lots of great tracks on here. Yeah, you know, so many good ones on here. I mean, <clears throat> Any Road is probably one of my favorites on the album. That and uh, Marwa Blues is kind of, it's a, in, kind of an Indian instrumental type song, but uh, just really, really a good one. And uh, Run So Far and Between the T Devil and the Deep Blue Sea, just all really good, good songs on here. So that's number four, I believe. Yes, four. Brainwashed from 2002. And then going back the opposite direction again in George's career, we got, uh, let's see, at number three from 1976, his first album he put out on his, his own Dark Horse label. This is 33 and a third. Just a, a really big change from his, his previous Apple albums, uh, I think. It's kind of a different sound. Um, still all very good stuff on here, though. Um, Woman, Don't You Cry For Me, the first track on the album. I just really love that one. It's kind of a rock and blues number. He does a really cool slide guitar and stuff on there. Uh, Beautiful Girl, This Song. Uh, if you've ever seen the music video for the, the song, This Song, it's kind of a almost like a Pony, uh, Monty Python type video, but it's kind of funny. Um, it's What You Value, and of course the big hit on here, Cracker Box Palace, which everybody probably knows that song. So yeah, just a really... Really solid album here, 33 and a third. All right, at number two, we got from 1987, Cloud Nine. And this one, I could basically just list every song that's on the album. They're all really good songs. There's not a bad one on here. Um, Cloud Nine, Fish on the Sand, uh, When We Was Fab, that's another cool video to watch if you've seen the uh, music video for that one. Uh, Devil's Radio, 
got and you know the number one hit on here got my mind set on you just a really great great album uh, again with the assistance from Jeff Lynn he did a really good job on producing this album as well I really enjoy this one and if you know George's solo career at all you know it's number one it's number one on many people's lists it's George Harrison's All Things Must Pass from 1970. Uh, we just reached, we just passed actually the 50th anniversary. And this album holds up 50 years later, 51 years later. Uh, just everything on here is great. Um, the title track, All Things Must Pass, Awaiting on You All, uh, If Not For You, Behind That Locked Door, just everything is great. Um, if you check back, few videos on my channel here. My wife and I did a uh, album review of this and you can kind of get our thoughts on every track that's on the album and see that there. And with any luck coming up anytime soon now we should hopefully be getting a new uh, deluxe box set of this and I've heard some of the uh, you know the All Things Must Pass they did the remix of that and I think that sounds really great so I'm looking forward to uh, the expanded box set and all the tracks that are included there. So I was hoping for an announcement today, but I haven't heard anything yet. So uh, I probably still have to wait a little while on that. But there you have it. The top 10 George Harrison albums from his solo career. And I just want to say happy birthday, George Harrison. And we'll see you guys on the next video. Take care, everybody.